In the cinematic landscape of 1976, an iconic film emerged, captivating audiences with its grandeur and spectacle. The tale of a colossal creature and its connection with humanity has left an enduring mark on popular culture. As you revisit this classic, you might find yourself pondering, do you harbor a cherished memory associated with the unfolding drama and mesmerizing special effects? Or perhaps there are lesser known facts or anecdotes about the movie that fascinate you. Now, think back to your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this cinematic marvel. Did it leave an indelible impression on your movie watching journey? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Crafted with cinematic prowess and fueled by a captivating narrative, this film holds a special place in the hearts of many. Share your connection to the colossal adventure that unfolded on the big screen and let the nostalgia flow. Hey, unique perspective adds depth to the shared experience of cinema enthusiasts. Fay Ray declined a cameo in the 1976 movie due to script disapproval. The miniature scenes, starting with the sacrifice scene, were filmed from April 26, 1976. Rumors of an affair between Jeff Bridges and Jessica Long during filming were false. Lang was with Mikhail Barsnikov, and Bridges was engaged to Susan Justin. Despite the rumors, Lang and Bridges have remained friends. Straight to the point, facts about the 1976 King Kong film. In the realm of the 1976 Kong, the meticulous setup for a shadowy encounter at St. Patrick's Cathedral stands out. Directed by William Cronick, the colossal task involved blocking Fifth Avenue, dimming surrounding lights, and orchestrating a rain-interrupted shoot with a riderless horse and carriage. The dedication to capturing Kong's looming presence amid adversity showcases the film's commitment to authenticity. Unlike its predecessors, the movie discreetly alludes to Kong's habitat. A mere 11 minutes in, an obscure historic vaguely mentions the Island of the Skull, leaving viewers to infer without explicitly naming Skull Island. This subtle narrative choice adds an intriguing layer to the cinematic experience. Carlo Rambaldi's mechanical marvel takes center stage as the largest of its kind, towering over 40 feet. The sheer scale of this creation attests to the film's dedication to bringing Kong to life in a visually striking manner. In conclusion, the 1976 cinematic journey into the world of Kong unveils meticulous efforts behind iconic scenes, subtle narrative choices, and a mechanical masterpiece etching its place in film history. Carlo Rambaldi and Rick Baker collaborated on seven masks to convey various emotions for Kong using hydraulics for movement. The masks, featuring plastic skulls and artificial muscle groups, allow wood for realistic facial expressions controlled offset by a team of operators. Baker, wearing contact lenses, completed the gorilla look. Producer Dino De Laurentiis insisted the 1976 Kong be set in the present day and include the newly constructed World Trade Center. In pre-production, De Laurentiis had Baker and Rambaldi create competing Kong suits, Baker's won, and casting decisions avoided racial insensitivity. These behind-the-scenes insights shed light on the film's meticulous crafting and adherence to contemporary elements. Filming the 1976 Kong spanned seven months with 12-hour days from January to August, June saw the New York City climax, attracting over 30,000 extras from a casting call meant for 5,000. The high angle shots of the military at the World Trade Center Plaza were pivotal, later used for Kong's climb. The 1977 Oscars stirred controversy with a hotly disputed Special Achievement Award, leading to resignations within the Board of Governors. Production's move to New York City in June 1976 marked a crucial juncture, setting the stage for iconic scenes atop the World Trade Center, etching the film's place in history. In crafting the 1976 movie, the filmmakers faced unique challenges exemplified by the colossal hydraulic gorilla arms designed for shots featuring Kong holding Jessica Long. These six feet wide hands weighing one 650 pounds. Each were a late addition to the production, causing a humorous mishap during a test that left producer Dino De Laurentiis amused. Adding a layer of authenticity, Federico De Laurentiis, the executive producer, extensively photographed a real gorilla named Bum at a local zoo, using those images as the basis for Kong. This meticulous approach to capturing the essence of a gorilla contributed to the film's realism. 
Furthermore, the film's historical significance took an unexpected turn post-911. Paramount Home Video voluntarily recalled DVDs featuring Kong atop the World Trade Center surrounded by aircraft. The DVD was later reissued with a different cover, reflecting the sensitivity of the times. These behind-the-scenes insights into the creation of Kong's physicality and the attention to detail in using real guerrilla references provide a glimpse into the commitment and challenges faced during the film's production. The World Trade Center sequence in the film incurred a hefty cost, totaling almost 250000 and involved filming twice. Cinemaphile's August 1976 edition hailed the approximately 45,000 background personnel as the largest crowd seen in film history at the time. Dino De Laurentiis, in a Time magazine cover story, expressed confidence in the emotional impact of Kong's demise, stating, No one cried when Jaws died, but when the monkey dies, people are going to cry. Intellectuals are going to love Kong. Even film buffs who love the first Kong are going to love ours. Why? Because I know give them crap. In a surprising twist, Meryl Streep auditioned for the role of Duan, as revealed in a 20-date interview with David Letterman. Dino De Laurentiis, unaware that Streep understood Italian, deemed her troppo brother per King Kong. Streep responded in flawless Italian, apologizing for disappointing him. These behind-the-scenes insights into the World Trade Center filming, De Laurentiis's perspective on emotional resonance, and Streep's unexpected audition provide a unique glimpse into the making of the iconic film. Carlo Rambaldi, renowned for his mechanical marvels, crafted the colossal hands that gripped Jessica Long in the 1976 cinematic venture. Supervised by Glenn Robinson at MGM's construction department, these hands, made of duraluminum metal, took four 12 months to create. Special bolts in the knuckles prevented excessive closure, ensuring safety even if the main cable broke. Covered with rubber and Argentinian horsetails, these hands added a realistic touch to Kong's physicality. Moving beyond the mechanical intricacies, production designer Dale Hennessy's dedication to authenticity stands out. To replicate the World Trade Center, Hennessy obtained blueprints and architectural drawings, meticulously recreating every detail. Multiple sets, including a studio back lot recreation of the main plaza, showcased the South and North Towers with precision. This commitment to accuracy underscored the film's attention to detail, bringing the iconic setting to life. Interestingly, Dino De Laurentiis initially sought Italian Mario Bava for special effects, but Bava's reluctance led him to recommend Carlo Rambaldi. This behind-the-scenes insight sheds light on the collaborative efforts that shaped the film's visual impact. In the hands of craftsmen like Rambaldi and Hennessy, the 1976 Kong emerged not just as a cinematic spectacle, but as a result of meticulous craftsmanship, capturing both the mechanical prowess and architectural authenticity. As we bid adieu to the colossal adventure that is King Kong, let's take a moment to traverse the cinematic jungle it planted in our minds. This 1976 masterpiece, a symphony of spectacle and emotion, weaves a tapestry of thrill and empathy. As you reflect on your journey with this towering titan of the silver screen, what memories sprout from the celluloid vines? Was it the pulse-pounding suspense or the awe-inspiring special effects that etched an indelible mark on your cinematic soul? Perhaps you found yourself caught in the whirlwind of the Kong-sized emotions, a roller coaster of fear, compassion, and the sheer marvel of the unknown. Share your thoughts, unveil the layers of connection you've built with this cinematic behemoth over the years. Did it inspire a fascination for the mysterious, or did it redefine your understanding of the line between beauty and the beast? In this shared exploration, our collective memories become the canvas on which Kong's colossal silhouette leaves an everlasting imprint. So, dear reader viewer, let your thoughts roar like the distant echoes of Skull Island. Unleash your memories, let them intertwine with the cinematic vines of the past. Thank you for embarking on this nostalgic journey with me as we navigate the lush terrain of King Kong's legacy. Hey, time and reflections are treasures in the vast cinematic jungle, enriching the experience for all. Stay curious, stay captivated, and until our next adventure in the realms of imagination.